Suppose we have a body and assign to every part of that body some mass. This defines a function on some collection of parts of the body. In order to describe this function better, we could try to associate to each point a density. Then, in a small part around a point, we can approximate the mass of this part by the product of the density and volume. More formally, we have that the mass of any part is the integral of the density over that part. This gives a nice description of our mass distribution. But can we always find a density which describes the mass distribution? In order to answer this question, let us formulate this question in a more abstract setting. The mass distribution and volume can be interpreted as measures on the same space. So let's take two measures on the same set with the same measurable sets. Now the question is whether we can find a measurable function such that the first measure can be calculated by integrating this function over some region with respect to the second measure. We may also want to know whether such a function is unique. Let's first look at a special case where both measures are finite. If we have two functions which describe new relative to mu, we can look at the sets on which they don't agree. If we integrate a non-negative function of some region and obtain zero, the function must be zero almost everywhere. That's why we obtain that f and g agree almost everywhere on the two sets a and b. Thus, we have that f and g are equal almost everywhere relative to mu. To generalize this, we can consider sigma finite measures, which may be described as being locally finite. More formally, a measure is called sigma finite if there is a sequence of measurable sets that cover the whole space and are of finite measure. For example, the Lebesgue measure in any dimension is sigma finite, as you can cover the whole space by a sequence of balls centered at the origin. The counting measure on the real numbers is not sigma finite, as the real numbers are uncountable. So there is no sequence of finite sets which cover all real numbers. We call a function which describes one measure relative to another the radon nicotine derivative. In general, we have to keep in mind that it's not uniquely determined, but at least for sigma finite measures, we know that it is unique up to a null set relative to mu. In order to understand under which conditions the radon nicotine derivative exists, suppose it does exist for our two measures. For any set of measure zero, the integral is also zero. Thus, if some set A has measure zero for mu, it also has measure zero for nu. We say that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. So if the radon nicotine derivative exists, the absolute continuity of one measure with respect to the other is implied. Unfortunately, this property does in general not suffice to guarantee the existence of the radon nicotine derivative. To make a general statement about the existence, we can additionally assume that both measures are sigma finite, which will guarantee the existence. Now we are ready to formulate the radon nicotine theorem, which guarantees the existence of the radon nicotine derivative under some conditions. The theorem states that given two sigma finite measures nu and mu such that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, then the radon nicotine derivative exists. Thus, there exists a measurable function which describes the density of nu relative to mu. Let's look at how to calculate the radon nicotine derivative for a measure on an interval which is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. We define the cumulative distribution function, which measures the interval up to a given point. This defines an increasing function. Thus, h is differentiable almost everywhere, and we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. After we rewrite the left-hand side of the equation, we obtain that the radon nicotine derivative is the derivative of the cumulative distribution function. Let's look at some other properties of the radon nicotine derivative which parallel properties of the derivative. We are always going to assume that all measures are sigma finite. First of all, we have a change of variables formula, which allows us to change the measure during the integration by multiplying with the radon nicotine derivative. Next, we have a sum rule. And finally, an analog to the chain rule. After this general discussion, let's look at the importance of the radon nicotine derivative in probability theory. Given a probability space and a random variable, we want to describe the probability that the outcome of x is in some measurable set. This probability defines a measure, called the push-forward measure in the real numbers. Now let's look at two special cases. 
If the push-forward measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, then the radon nicotinum derivative is also called probability density function. For example, if the random variable is normally distributed, the probability density function is given by this formula. If the random variable is discrete, so there are only finite or countably many outputs, the push-forward measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the counting measure. The radon nicotinum derivative is here called the probability mass function. For example, if the random variable is binomially distributed, the probability mass function is given by this formula. This allows us to directly calculate the probability of given events. So far, we were only able to describe measures nu, which were absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Although we know that a radon nicotinum derivative cannot exist, if nu is not absolutely continuous with respect to mu, we might be able to decompose nu in two measures, one of which is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Ideally, we would like to decompose the measure such that we find the maximal absolutely continuous part. Let's describe this more formally by defining what it means for two measures to be singular. Two measures nu and mu are called singular if there exist two disjoint measurable sets A and B, whose union is the whole space, such that mu is zero on B and nu is zero on A. If two measures are singular, then each measure is only non-zero on null sets of the other measure. So this is kind of a reversal of absolute continuity. Now we can formulate Lebesgue's decomposition theorem. It states that for every two sigma finite measures, we can find a unique decomposition of one of the measures in an absolutely continuous part and a singular part. This concludes our exploration of the radon nicotinum derivative. Thanks for watching.